Hello and welcome to episode uh, 12 of my, uh, I should say, weekly episodes of this uh, talk. Uh, I have tried to keep it on Mondays, but uh, today is not Monday, it's Friday. I, um, yeah, I'll be back on a Monday soon, not next week, because I'm going to be away next week in Portland, Oregon, uh, in the US, uh, in a pretty big uh, Mozilla meet up or a work week or whatever um anyway this episode is um is um the standard out episode i did <laughs> i did uh, i think i mentioned it last episode that i was that i posted a um, blog post about what i was about to i don't remember but anyway during this period i posted a blog post about why curl defaults to standard out when you just type curl and the URL and it spits out everything on the terminal or wherever you send your standard out to. I basically, I mean, when I this when I decided curl should do that originally from the beginning, I, I thought of curl pretty much like the cat command of cat in Unix or Linux. I didn't use Linux much when I started this, but Unix, other Unixes. And uh, so it was kind of natural for me to just use the, the ordinary everything is a pipe kind of mantra in, in Unix and send everything to standard out and you do what you want to do with it. And then, of course, we added options. So you could save it to five instead. But but that's kind of came natural for me. And I've, I've, I've just blogged about that. And I, I have this funny situation that I, I blog about stuff, about curl and other stuff regularly actually pretty much every week or every other week or so and 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 a, a normal day in my blog i get a couple of hundred viewers and a normal blog entry just get viewed by yeah a couple of hundred persons perhaps o over time and then suddenly wham someone uh, posts about my blog post on some site and this time it was on hacking news and suddenly it became my most viewed blog entry of all times and uh massive um, <laughs> amount of comments in the blog post, which really is rare for my blog and, and uh, on a lot of uh, related sites, like on the Hacking News sites itself and so on. So yeah, that was fun. And it was a, <laughs> for being uh, comments on the internet, they were actually pretty friendly and not at all as hostile as they can be. And of course, then where, when I said that, yeah, I get comments about how curl compares to wget in this aspect that people mention that wget is much easier because you don't have to uh, enter any extra uh, command options when you want to save a url while in curl you actually need to enter like dash capital o um yeah and a lot of people don't mention that yeah it's not at all that easy for if you don't have any file name in the url for example then curl won't save it to a file because it doesn't have any file name to save to it so on but yeah still for most urls that that's exactly the difference anyway the um it was fun and it, I, I i i like when it kind of get some interesting comments and feedbacks about what people actually think and and um, yeah i got also a, a lot of positive feedback so uh, i would say that the majority actually responded and said that they would agree with me that it is the correct way of doing uh, things. But of course, they too have learned that this is the way curl acts. So I don't know. That's still nothing we can change today and it'll just keep working like this. Or uh, when, when I did that blog post and, and uh, then as a, as a direct effect of that, they, they started a discussion in the wget mailing list about if they should make a second binary, like a, a, a second command line tool for wget that would act like curl, like a wcat command that would send everything standard out by default just to make it easier because sending wget output to standard out is not as immediately obvious to anyone, to, to users as the reverse is for curl. So, and, and then of course I got the suggestions for curl to make a 
separate command for curl that would do uh, like a get to a file by default then to have a separate perhaps a, instead of a c url command it would be a g, g url command perhaps so yeah while i'm not uh, violently against such a, a suggestion or if anyone if anyone would actually pursue such an idea i wouldn't stand in the way but um, that's not where i'm gonna uh, put my my efforts and time and sweat so yeah fun but mm, possibly not worth the time and effort uh, yeah, yeah, and I wanted to mention another little fun tidbit from the WGET development is that um, <laughs> it, it came up in a discussion on the, on the, on the development list there that uh, someone posted a patch that uh, didn't properly use the form feed characters in the source code. And it turns out that, you know, form feed characters in source code, good idea, right? Or could it be that you don't know what it is or why it's there for? Uh, it turns out that the, the, the GNU source code style guide still says that you should use form feed characters to divide source code into logical sections or whatever it says. So it should, not, not that you have to, but you should. And, and com, uh, form feed characters is the control L um, character, which back in the old days used to do a new page for printers. So it would, yeah, it's kind of an insert new page or whatever the, the word processors have. But anyway, <laughs> I kind of uh, uh, stepped up on, on the side and asking them to just drop form feeds from source code because nobody uses form feeds for that purpose and no printers understand uh, form feed characters anymore. So form feed characters in source code is just blah. And then, of course, yeah, yeah, yeah. There is a mode for Emacs that can take advantage of that. And I'm sure that there actually are about three actual users out there that find very good use for this. And that you three can all comment on this video and we can have some fun discussions about that. But form feed characters are now history from the WGS source code and they've been removed and the change has been pushed. Not by me, but I was on the pro side in that discussion. Actually, nobody defended the presence of form feed. Uh, in, in curl then, it's been almost two weeks since I last spoke about this. So I kind of just looked at it and yeah, we've done a bunch of bug fixes. We've continued on the pipelining stuff. So yeah, um, it's going forward. We've been back and forth a lot and uh, we have, I've merged a couple of things there. and. Perhaps uh, the most notable bug fix is that, that we um, improved HTTP2, plain text HTTP2, that's the called uh, H2C, it's clear text. So, um, because then we do, um, we do, I mean, protocol wise, you do an HTTP 1.1 request and you use the upgrade header in the request and the response then from uh, HTTP2 compatible server would switch to and say, I'm switching to HTTP2 and then speak HTTP2. Uh, yeah, and, and curl supported it, but we had several bugs uh, in, in that code, which of course is a, a side effect that there are me knowingly no public server out there that supports HTTP2 plain text. So we haven't really had a, a good chance to try it for real, uh, but there are a gun bunch of good people now that have tried it for real and they found out these problems. And then they also ran into another problem that it turns out that, that re, uh, uh, related to pipelining. Pipelining, you know, is when you ask uh, in HTTP 1.1, you <coughs> reuse the connection to send multiple requests before the, the, response, the responses have come back. So you can send uh, request, 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 and then get response, response, response. So you, you kind of defeat the, the round trip penalty. Uh, this is a tricky thing, but, but we have support for it in, in libcurl. Uh, when you use the multi-interface, 
the, the interface when you do a lot of, or you can do a lot of simultaneous transfers. You just add, add a bunch of transfers and you ask to get them all done at once. And if you enable pipelining, then you can make all those that are supposed to be done at once to actually uh, do pipelining instead so that they will share the connections uh, in a much better way. So that if you do a lot of connections on a, on a, on a fewer set of uh, host names, uh, and, uh, and of course the protocol is HTTP and uh, some other conditions, it, it'll do pipelining instead, which uh, is uh, in some circumstances a pretty big performance benefit. Anyway, the logic in that kind of made libcurl try to do pipelining even for HTTP2 connections. So if one of those connections, you, you say, yeah, I want to do HTTP2 for this, and you did a lot of connections, you said, yeah, go ahead, use pipelining. That's a good idea. We would try to switch on pipelining for HTTP2, too. And that's uh, not a good idea. Pipelining doesn't really, ex doesn't at all exist in HTTP2, but instead you're supposed to do multiplexing over the same connection, which I would define as kind of a pipelining deluxe or pipelining much better than. So, but, but we don't have support for that in libcurl yet. So instead we did everything broken, but now instead we will just make sure that um, uh, if you have pipelining enabled, you want to do that with libcurl, we just won't do it if, if the connection is HTTP2, but then they will remain doing uh, individual connections to the servers. That's of course something we want to improve because we want to do multiplexing instead of pipelining and to really make sure, uh, I mean, take advantage of, advantage, advantage of the goodness of HTTP2. Of course, I will greatly appreciate help with this, but I'm also aware that this is into the core and integrated hairy details of libcurl. So I'm kind of ass assuming that I will uh, be the one to actually at least do the first implementation of that. Hopefully not too far away in, in time from now. And, um, but yeah, I wanted to mention also that curl is still not really HTTP2 enabled in most Linux distros, um, or even in any downloadable package that you get if you don't build it yourself. And actually most people that build it uh, themselves won't have it HTTP2 enabled either because we rely on the, I've said it num a number of times and you know it by now, that we rely on the ng-http2 library. And ng-http2 is a, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a great library for HTTP2, so yeah. Mm. But uh, it's not really up to date and available in all the distros. And I think also that a lot of people that build curl, they don't have it around and built and used. So that's the primary reason why you, when you type curl dash, capital V now and, and look at which features it supports, you'll see that it won't support HTTP2, or it might show that, but for a lot of people it will show that, and the reason is exactly that. So um, I hope that, that the Linux distros will start providing this library soon so that they can switch on HTTP2 as well, as then we'll get more testing, and there are a number of sites now that are running HTTP2 live on the internet, like Google and Twitter and so on. So it is time to start fiddling with this for real on the internet and tell me all the problems and we can work them out. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, start tweaking all those little tweaks that we need when, when things go live and real. HTTP 2, by the way, um, the latest draft is um, draft 15. There's a 16 coming soon. The binary format on the wire is supposed to, I mean, it is the same. There's a lot of clarifications in, 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 in the text. So there's a pretty big diff in, in, in the wording, but there sh everything should be compatible on the wire. Apart from the little fact that you actually, we actually use the draft number in, in the protocol identifier. So you need to actually ask for the exact, um, HTTP2 draft number in, in, the, in when negotiating client to, to the server. So that might add some, uh, I mean, 
th there, there might be some cases where you don't get HTTP2 because you, the client will ask for 14 or 15 or soon 16, and the server might then provide and, and only support one of those three or all three of them. And Firefox, for example, is going to start asking for HTTP2 without draft number, just the final version to just be prepared for what's coming. And I, I hope and think that more more uh, clients and servers will just start uh, supporting that too, so that we will uh, sometime next year start seeing uh, HTTP2 for real live deployed out there. Uh, someone yesterday was posted on Hacker News about this, uh, about my HTTP2 explain document, which you really should read if you're into if you want to. Uh, figure out more, more more details about HTTP2, why why it exists, how it became like this, and, and a little bit about implement, implementations uh, and, and and going further. And someone posted about it on Hacker News, and wham, it was downloaded more than ten thousand times yesterday, which is a pretty <laughs> big impact on my server uh, st uh, site statistics. Kind of a hockey stick curve now, and and uh, that's that's fun, and I, I appreciate it. And if you have comments about the the details and, and language or what's missing or what's wrong or whatever, just uh, let me know. And uh, I intend to try to keep that document up to date and um, uh, adjust it accordingly uh, going forward as well. Um, yeah, next week I won't do any video at all and hopefully I will be back on Monday videos then after the, the week. Um, we'll see. Um, it doesn't really matter. If you see this, it doesn't really matter in which day it comes out or, or not, but it's all for the fun of it. Um, very long episode. Now I'm gonna quit. Um, make sure that you saw everything of this with uh, this um, annotations enabled on this video because I've packed it with different references and comments and everything. See you in a little over a week. Bye.